What's going on, everybody? It's Tough Pro Fan here, capital T U F Pro Fan. It's the same on Twitter and Instagram. Follow me, join me, subscribe. And I just got through watching TNA Bound for Glory 2016. Whether or not this is TNA's last show ever, this was a pretty good show, I gotta say. I give it a pretty high grade. Let's go over the results right now, shall we? The show opened up with DJZ, the X Division Champion versus Trevor Lee. Good match, really good match. Both guys had a diving spot that was pretty cool. Um, Trevor Lee's crossbody turnaround spot is cool. DJZ did the Canadian Destroyer type thing, followed by the DJT or whatever he calls it, the DDT, his special DDT, and he won and retained the title. Good opening contest. Next match of the night was the Bound for Gold, I think it's called. It's like a Royal Rumble style with 10 people, and you can pin to end the match or throw them out. I don't know. This is where they just threw a whole bunch of people that didn't have anything going on into the same match, and the guy that most people like the best, <clears throat> the best, I mean, Eli Drake, won the whole thing. He eliminated Tyrus and Jesse Goddard at the end to become victorious. He, he eliminated him. He didn't pin anybody. Everybody got eliminated. Uh, Braxton Sutter was the first guy eliminated. It was nice to see Rockstar Spud. I wish he won it somehow, but I understand. He's a small guy. But still, it would have been nice to see him win it. But I'm okay with Eli Drake because he's pretty cool. Up next, trying to remember how this works. Oh yeah, the Grand Championship. Um, Unfortunately, Drew Galloway couldn't compete, so Eddie Edwards took his place. Good match. Aaron Rex seems kind of out of shape to me. I don't know what that was about. I know they pre-tape shows and all, and I don't know how long it's been between the pre-tape and the live show, but Aaron Rex seemed just out of shape for this one. I don't know. And then this Grand Championship style where there's rounds, so he got to rest in between rounds and he came back and I just wasn't that impressed with the match I mean it was kind of like a run of the mill thing Aaron Rex won by a judge's scorecard so there's that but I was this was the I mean I wasn't that impressed with bound for gold because it was full of jobbers kind of even though Drake and Spud are cool but um I wasn't impressed with this one either because I don't know Rex seemed out of shape and the rounds type of thing just I didn't get it good match but I just I don't like that format too well all right after that I'm trying to think I want to make sure that I get it right we have the TNA Hall of Fame induction ceremony no 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 it was Moose versus Mike Bennett first again to me Moose looked like he was out of shape a little bit I mean he's a big man but he looked like he had to pull his trunks up a little higher to hide a belly. And again, good match. Mike Bennett kind of pulled him through. Moose is impressive. And Moose won the top rope double arm uh, powerbomb type move. I think it's called go to hell or something. And he looked pretty impressive. And it was a pretty good match. Moose won. That's good. They're showing like the future. You know, both these guys are young and both these guys could be the future. I like how they gave Moose the win, because he's kind of... I like that they gave Moose the win. The bad guys losing on the big shows always makes sense. They gave Moose an entrance, too, with, like, football players. I didn't care for that too much, but they're alluding to his past as a football player. So, again, that was kind of cool. Then, I believe, if I remember correctly, and it just ended, which is kind of sad if I don't remember correctly... That they did the Hall of Fame ceremony for Gail Kim. Uh, Christy Hemme came out. Taryn Terrell came out. She's pregnant. And Awesome Kong came out. And she's a lot skinnier and has normal hair now. Instead of dreads. And they all said something nice. Dixie Carter came out. Said a bunch of nice stuff. They had a video package. Gail Kim came out. And gave a bunch of thank yous. A bunch of shout outs to like Molly Holly and Trish Stratus. And Finley and a whole bunch of guys back from her WWE past, so that was kind of cool. And it was just kind of a nice moment because the video package showed like all the great stuff that she's actually done in wrestling and why she deserves 
to be in the TNA Hall of Fame. And I kind of like how TNA, what they did with their Hall of Fame, like guys that are still pretty active are in their Hall of Fame. It makes it different than other Hall of Fames. Like Sting, well Sting just retired. Kurt Angle just kind of retired. The Dudley Boys, uh, Earl Hebner, still a referee. Gail Kim, still wrestling. So, it's interesting. It's an interesting, like, different Hall of Fame. And the fact that they only have one inductee per year makes it kind of special for that one person. Makes it very special for that one person. So, I kind of like that. I kind of dig it, actually. How they're doing that with their Hall of Fame. Next up. Oh, boy. If next up is what I think is up next, then wow. Uh, the Great War, ladies and gentlemen. Let me make sure that that is what was up next, because I'm trying to think. Yeah. <laughs> Decay versus the Hardy Boys, Broken Matt, and Brother Nero. This thing was incredible. In Incredible, amazing, uh, I don't even have any more words for it, you have to see it for yourself, these guys just keep upping the bar, this time it was like part wrestling, part theater, I can't even call the whole thing, I can't even tell you the whole thing, it was just amazing, and at one point, uh, at one point, Matt Hardy produced fire, somehow from his hands and shot fireballs at abyss and Janice caught on fire and they're fighting over flaming Janice and they're fighting all over Universal Studios and Jeff Hardy was turning into all his alter egos of the past and there was pumpkins involved and Rebby Sky got sprayed in the face with the mist and and Rosemary got sprayed and she was doing the spray. Ah, it was crazy. You guys have to see this match. I can barely describe it to you. But the end came. Brother Nero, Jeff Hardy did a crazy dive off a ladder through tables, through Crazy Steve. Um, before that, I mean, that was the end of the match. But before that, Abyss got all locked up in barbed wire and tacks and all that madness. Uh, he stapled Jeff's head, except I don't remember seeing too much blood, so I doubt it was, you know, real staples or whatever. But still, crazy, amazing, WTF-style match. Um, just insane. The Hardy Boys won. They're the tag team champions. Just insane. And after that, you had the... Knockouts Championship match. Gail Kim versus Maria Canellis Bennett, who was once again trying to get out of the match, but you know, the gimmick, like the stupid um, uh, assistant, Allie, was there, and she said that she is fine after all, after Maria was trying to get out of it with her broken hand and such. And it was a pretty short match, pretty short but brutal match. It was good for what it could be. Maria's not really a wrestler, see? That's the whole thing. Maria looked okay, but she's not really a wrestler. She's like a manager that can get beat up. Kind of like Bobby the Brain Heenan was and Jimmy Hart was. The managers or valets that can get beat up. So, Gail Kim wins. Eat defeat. She flipped her the bird and gave her a finishing maneuver and she won. Gil Kim, six-time TNA Knockouts Champion. Good stuff. After the match, Mike Bennett came out. I was all mad <laughs> that the night did not go too well for the Bennetts. And Cody and Brandy Rhodes show up. And they didn't say anything. They just beat up Maria and Mike. They're good guys. It works. Cody and Brandy are in TNA. So, we knew that was coming, we didn't know where it was coming, that was the perfect spot, and there you go. On to the main event, No Holds Barred, Lashley versus EC3, again, really good match, 
I thought it was a really good match. They went back and forth. They traded finishers. Before Lashley's name even got announced, he speared EC3, which was kind of cool. EC3 was coming back from behind the whole match, it looked like. At one point, he destroyed him with the steel chair. Lashley destroyed EC3 with steel chairs. EC3 did a TK3 on the steps. It was a little bit sloppy looking, but it also looked kind of cool. Um, EC3 did a whole destroying Lashley with the chairs. He hit the one percenter. That didn't win it for him. He went for a top rope one percenter. But Lashley shoved him off, did a spear off the second rope. It looked really cool. And Lashley pins him for the one, two, three. And Lashley is still your TNA World Heavyweight Champion. Fade to black. Show's over. Um.